<laughs> he's been harassing me. He heard my car keys and he thinks he's gonna go on a C-A-R-R-I-D-E. Sorry, but it's too cold. It's too cold, you can't go. Hey, bug kid. How you doing, sweetie? I know, table's <laughs> full of things that need to be wrapped. What are you whining about? I'll be whining. Yeah, you were just out there. It's puppyhood. Here's what's been going on with him. Since we've had this cold weather over the last few days, like it's been getting down like 20, 21 at night, and then only getting up to 35, 40 during the day. It's cold. He doesn't like it. I totally understand that. So I let him out, and he immediately turns around. He's like, okay, I'll come back in. You give me my treat. That's not how we do things. So he's decided that when I walk him out to the grass to actually make sure he goes potty, that I think he's only like halfway empty <laughs> emptying his bladder. Then we come back inside, and then when no one's around, he pees on the floor. And as of yesterday, poops on the floor too, but he's only doing it on the hard floors, so I appreciate that. But what's going on here? Stop it. That's nasty. Don't poop on the floor. It's kind of hard to put. Oh, it won't zoom back out. Are we stuck here? Are we? There we go. Uh, yeah, it's hard to blame him though when it's, you know, 20 degrees outside. I wouldn't want to do that outside either. It's very cold. Not much fun. Wouldn't want to be squatting outside. What's 20 degrees? But that is a no. Well, now that we've covered what's going on with my dog's bowels and bladder, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? Jeff here. Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Amaryllis getting ready to put on another show. Blighting. It's bad. Starting off with the phone, because it's got to go run some errands. Just one. I have to go to Home Depot. And, you know, Lowe's is my bae, and I feel bad for cheating on Lowe's, but I've been trying to get some wire shelves for a while, and they're just always out of stock. Home Depot, they have them. So I'm going to run, and they have three in stock. I've been checking often. I ordered some from a, like a, I don't know, garage organization website kind of place, and they're not going to show up until mid-January, so canceled that. You know, the shipping delays just everything. It just is what it is. That's not that big of a deal, but I need them now. Oh, he's so hopeful. I'm so sorry, baby. You have to stay, <laughs> you have to stay here. Okay, fine, you can go, but you have to wait. You can't just bolt out the door. Yeah, lie down. Good boy. We'll see how this goes. You wait, uh-uh, sit, wait, wait, wait. Okay, you're free, come on, let's go. That is accurate. You have to wait. Uh-uh, sit down. He's like, I don't want to lie down. You don't have to lie down. I didn't tell you to. All right, you're free. Let's go to the car. Have a seat. Be a polite boy. Have a seat, Turbo. Turbo, sit. That works, too. Jeez, you're cute. Uh, you're supposed to be sitting. What are you doing? You're supposed to be sitting down. Dog loves his car rides. Makes me so happy. It's pushing 40 degrees. It's starting to warm up somewhat outside. You're supposed to be sitting, turbo set. Ugh. Isn't he freaking adorable? He's such a sweetheart. Yes, you are. Okay, bye, turbo. A hell of a zoom. If you were wondering, no, this isn't the only thing I ever wear. I realize I've had this on in the last few vlogs. One of those things where I keep it around and just wear it like a coat. Well, it warmed up a lot in 10 minutes. I went ahead and cracked. You can't, no, you can't go in. I think he's allowed, but I don't feel like it. Pop in real quick, grab some shelves. Maybe we'll look at the plants. Because that auto starter only keeps the car running for like, I think 20 minutes, maybe 25. Ooh, hoo -hoo. look at the size of this one. Big, thick cactus. They look healthy too. Everything else here looks the same as my last vlog. Oh, these hills are huge though. Look at that. Wow, those are nice looking plants. You don't usually see these in a hanging basket either. They look nice. That waxy foliage, that nice succulent nature they have to them. Some Cinecios, string of bananas. Monsteras, Dracaenas, Majesty Palms, Tiny Bird of Paradise, Thuriums, whole bunch more ivy, lots of ivy. Ah, they got some Hemigraphus in. Haven't seen those in a long time. Purple waffle plants, those are fun. And then Sony Ice. Looking nice. 
It's cute. That's very cute. Just that skinny little stem with those big leaves. That's fun. Well, that's fun. It's a very light, faint variegation on these. Look at that. Kind of like that. Reminds me of the uh, Jacinia. Is that what it's called? I have one. I can't remember its name. It's a variegation on it. It's very light and very mild. Doesn't have the best growth habit to it, though. Maybe this is just kind of an improved variation on that. Those are fun. I like them. Oh, Calatheas. So pretty. Pretty and a pain in the butt. Scandapsis. I think these are the Sterling Scandapsis, I believe. Maybe? I'm not sure. I just realized I have my mask on. I should be speaking up. I don't know if you've been able to hear anything I've been saying. Hopefully you have. Why? Stop it. Just stop. Get it. It looks cool, but it's stupid. Stop being stupid. Succulents here are looking fairly decent. You, know, you gotta get these pretty much right when they come in because the shelving here, they don't get much light. Oh, three for ten. Hmm. I have a snowman mug at home and I want to stuff his face full of succulents. A mug with a mouth on it, like an opening for you to put a I guess a candle or something in to keep your drink warm. But I got it because I wanted to stuff his face full of succulents. And now I'm faced with the dilemma of, well, what kind of succulents would a snowman even be eating? Ugh. Um, excuse me. Excuse me, Turbo. I'm gonna need you to move. I cleared that spot out. Not for you. That's for me. That's for my shelves. What are you doing? You can't be there. Go back to your seat. Good boy, Turbo. Now stay. Sit. Sit. That works too, just stay there, good boy. <laughs> oh, so close. Actually, that might close. Yep. You have the time of your life back there, Turbo. You have the time of your life, baby. I had to switch windows, huh? Okay. Loving the smells at a drive-thru. Toby's fine. He's at home, he was asleep. I didn't feel like bothering him to come out and get him into the car and everything. You know, he's an old man. Really, Pumpkin? Really? Yeah, I know, Turbo, you're not doing it. Pumpkin! Pumpkin, stop! Opening presents, that's rude, that one's not for you. Don't be greedy. Not very nice, I spent a long time wrapping that present. You're a good boy, Turbo. Immediately acting like he's in trouble. It's the next day, played with the pets, give Toby some love. Who's currently this brown mess over there. There's Toby, hey Toby. Such a good baby, Toby. Pumpkin's been playing. Chewing on presents, just being a little angel. Love her so much. Such a sweetheart. Love you, Pumpkin. All right. Okay. Bye, bye, Pumpkin. I guess I should go out to the grow space and get to work. Here's what the plan is. Probably should have started the video off with this, but it just seemed to make more sense to wait until I could actually show what I'm working on out here, what I'm hoping to work on out here. 48 by 24, 72 inches high, steel shelves supposedly can hold 850 pounds per shelf when weight is evenly distributed. I don't know about that. It doesn't matter. I'm not gonna be putting 850 pounds worth of plants on any of these. Not that I'm not up for the challenge. So last night I went ahead and started to get this put together. I started to put this together. There's a piece of coconut fiber in my lens. I got that shelf to go in place of this right here. Just this, not this. These are 48 by 22. My, I think it might have been like 23 and a quarter. I can't remember. Set these up a couple years ago just because I had the tables. So I was like, well, this makes sense. I can just throw them up here. I put these, I think they're photo storage bins on there, drilled holes in them. So those were there for drainage when I watered and they have air stones run inside of them to keep that water moving so it doesn't get gross and provide humidity for the plants above them. It worked fairly well, but there are a few issues with this setup. The first one is that well, it looks stupid, so it's not very aesthetically pleasing. I can live with that. I don't really care about that. I'm out here in my garage. Second one is that not really all that safe. Like this could very easily tumble forward. 
but again it's just plants like there's nothing super heavy or dangerous over here but a little bit difficult to anchor folding tables back to the wall i guess it wouldn't be that difficult i just haven't felt like doing it it's just kind of a flimsy setup the way i can distribute the height on these isn't really ideal because of these tables they only have a few different settings for adjusting the height this wasn't ideal. This part right here is just not quite enough space. This is fine down here, but it would, be, would have been nice to have something else down lower. And then the biggest issue is that I'm really not utilizing the space. You know, this is, like I said, I think it's 48 by, we'll say 23, 48 by 23, but the plants are only sitting on top of these trays right here, which are like maybe 36 by 18. I could fit a lot more up here if I had something that fit properly. You may remember a couple of vlogs ago, couple Saturdays prior to this one, I went to Lowe's and got some egg crate or uh, fluorescent light panel diffusers. That was to go inside of some trays that are made to fit a 48 by 24 wire shelf, made specifically for plants, for hydroponics, people who are growing microgreens and those sorts of things. My plan at the time was to just go ahead and put those here, but then I thought about it and I was like, all right, well, that's going to come with its own set of problems, right? Because these legs are going to have to sit down inside of those trays, creating pressure points on them, even though they're pretty sturdy. You'll see them in just a moment. Still not ideal. I'd have to cut out special indentions. Again, not that hard, just don't really want to have to hassle with it. And the diffusers that's going to sit above those trays, which will make more sense when I show you the trays. And I would need to come in here and waterproof these. So I bought some of that spray on flex seal stuff so I could just like absolutely drench these legs so that if they're sitting submerged in water, because remember these would be sitting inside of the tray, so this tray would be covering the entire tabletop, this would be inside of it, that submerged in water, that's going to fall apart. So through all this planning, I eventually came to the conclusion of it would be a lot easier to just put these on the actual wire shelves that they're intended for. It makes more sense, and then hopefully can utilize the space better. It'll help with organizing the plants, I'll have them stacked up here more efficiently, and it just, it's going to work better for myself. So I got online, ordered the wired shelves. They're pretty much out of stock most places. I hadn't checked Home Depot at the time, but Lowe's didn't have them. And I think I mentioned when I was at the store on the way to the store, I ended up ordering from somewhere else and then was like, okay, they're not gonna ship until like forever, several weeks. So that's when I said, okay, let me look online. Maybe Home Depot has them. Went to, you know, we're all caught up now. I've got the shelves put together, kind of, mostly. Also knocked over the ponytail palm. I need to get <laughs> back there. I'll get to that later. It's fine. It's a tough plan. It'll be okay. I spaced the shelves out approximately how I think I would like them to be. I don't have anything up top here, which I wasn't sure about because I thought, well, the top might be a, a really important part of the stability, but this feels, I don't know, it feels pretty sturdy. Then I have my trays here. These, I believe these were sold as flood trays, shallow flood trays. Then they slide right into place. It really is an exact fit, perfect fit. So there's a bit of a mock-up of what I'm going for here. First shelf, the one that's down low, I figure it made sense for that one to be where it's going to be more shallow. Be a better area for like seed starting or plants that need really intense light because it's, you know, smaller distance between where the light will hang, which is going to be up here, right above everything. Second shelf, room for larger plants that have some height on them, and then the same thing with the third. So the reason I didn't put the top on this was because, well, it just, I wouldn't have been able to get three shelves on here. I don't think that I would have anyway. It's not three shelves that would have sufficed for taller plants, right? I figure if I leave the top off there and I can just hang the light from the ceiling, and have that adjustable and be able to put bigger plants up here if need be. I figure this is probably the best way to go about it because I can just hang a light from the ceiling, adjust it how I need to, and be able to put plants of all different sizes up here. I'm still gonna aim for plants that aren't very big. That's the point of the shelves, it's for plants that aren't huge. Things in like eight inch pots and smaller. That's what this is for, and I'm going to be able to fit so much on here. I just have to now get this over there and get that out of here. That's gonna be fun. Oh, and here's that egg crate stuff I was talking about, the light diffuser. This, uh, I don't know how to explain this. Nifty material, I've mostly used these for fish tank applications, but they also come in nifty with the plants when working on shelving. So the idea here was to create a surface that's not going to fit in there. I haven't tried this yet, I, did, I didn't prepare. All right, well pretend that that fits on there perfectly. It has to be trimmed to fit. The idea there was that this would be a surface for the plants to sit on above the water that drains below them with those air stones and that will provide humidity up around the plants. 
Even though these are flood trays, I don't really want to do the flood tray application. If you don't know uh, flooding, what that is, is basically you go ahead and plumb these up. You hook them to a pump that goes to a reservoir, put the basin somewhere down below. The water moves up, comes through, travels along inside there around the bases of the plants, gives them a really nice drink, and then it goes out the other end down there. Excellent way to do propagations, like mass propagations. I'm not doing that. I'm using these most just as drainage and humidity trays. That's all these are for me. I will likely plumb these up at some point so that excess water can drain out. I'll put it on a valve and let that run out, but that's not something that I need to worry about right now. So this egg crate diffuser panel, this would sit just above everything so that the plants aren't down below there. And I made sure to buy extra because you have to build supports out of this material. You cut it. It cuts fairly easily. Lots of sharp pieces go flying those. It's a good idea to wear eye protection. You end up just making little platforms that go underneath to help create stability. So that's what those are for. So now if you watch that vlog from a couple of weeks ago when I went to go get these things and I was talking about how I really wanted to get it in black but the black that I had ordered wasn't going to arrive until I think February something like that. So I canceled that order. You see why? I just think it would have looked nicer. I could always spray paint it but again like it doesn't really matter so not a big deal. That's the background to all of that. But yeah, now I need to just, I gotta, I gotta pull it all out and then put things back in. That'll be fun. Yeah, I assembled this ahead of time mostly because I needed to make sure that these actually fit, right? Because if they didn't fit, I was going to need to take this entire thing back. So I wanted to get that done before going through the hassle of moving everything. And it doesn't weigh very much. I think it's like with all the shelves, I think it said 90 pounds and there are two shelves that aren't on there. I'm only using four of them. One of them down there is just obligatory because they said that you had to have one at the very bottom for stability, so that's why that one's there. That'll come in nifty. I can, like, put bags of things down there. <laughs> Never a shortage of stuff to put on a shelf around here. And it got cold once the sun went down. I wanted something to do in the grow space and figured this would be the most productive thing to do. It's the next day. It's warmer. This is why I was planning to do this right now. I have to do it right now because it's warm enough that I can pull the plants out, shove them in the driveway to make room and get all this taken apart. And you get it. I'm gonna do a before and after because my genius self didn't, I didn't charge my microphones. So those don't have much life left in them. So that'll give me some time to charge my mics. And then hopefully when we come back, there'll be shelves over here and they'll either be done or we'll still be working on them. I don't know. We will see in just, just one moment. You ready? Okay, it's probably now. Okay, it's not 100% done yet, but here it is. Huh? I like it. So much more room on these shelves for the plants. Wow, it is really dark in here. There's still an ample amount of room left in almost every single one of these trays. I did just sort of toss everything onto them. So they aren't really organized. Now that I have them set up, I do think that I may go ahead and lower this bottom shelf down because I could use just a smidge more space on the shelf right here. So if I were to bring this one down a little ways, I don't know though, because that would be, I need that space to store stuff. Now, I have to think on that, but I could use just a little bit more space on this shelf, but really, once I get the lights hung up here for this top shelf, I can get a lot more up there of the larger plants. And I think that that will help with this situation over here. Cause there's like, there's a hibiscus stuck in there that's too big. Although that can, I can scoot that over there. Yeah, I need to play around with this a lot. That's pretty much what this comes down to. I really do like how this looks aesthetically. It looks better in person. The lighting, I can try and bring my exposure up. Does that help at all? Eh, kind of. More just washes things out. For now, they're just sitting inside the trays. I have not put that diffuser panel on top yet because I'm still, I'm kind of on the fence about that because these already have pre-made drain areas in them. Over here on this end of each tray, there's a drain, like a, a little reservoir in there that everything runs down to. And I'm like, well, that would be really nifty to go ahead and just plumb those up. There's one right here, one right there, and then one down. Oh, that one's backwards. Well, I need to, okay, I'll flip that around. But it's just one hose that goes down to another hose that'll go down to another hose, and then I'll actually probably just run the hose out. Let it drain out. I don't think I'll use a reservoir. And then I'd put a valve on the bottom of each one of those. By doing that, that would allow me to uh, water these and do like a semi-flood. So basically just let the water sit in there, let them have a nice soak and a good drink, and then open the valve, and then the water can come back out. Does that make sense? 
I might be overthinking this. But as it is right now, if I go ahead and water, which I need to, the plants are very thirsty. I need to give them a good drink tomorrow morning. If I give them a good soak, they're just going to be sitting in that. So I will need to put those drains in. So I'll have to make another run to the hardware store at some point here. It's not going to happen in this video though. The holidays and all the stuff going on, this is a shorter video. So sorry about that, but it'll be a part two, maybe next weekend. Finish some stuff up out here. Have a look at the plants, do some other projects. I don't know. So one of the lights that I bought when I was at Sam's doesn't work. It's right there. And I need another one. So I need to return that one, pick up two more. So that's why there's no light up here right now. But there's a window right behind it. So I'm just going to pull that curtain open and they'll get natural light. They'll be getting more light right there than they were sitting in the gorilla cart, which was over here on the ground for like what? A month and a half, the poor things. They got to take in a lot of moisture when they'd get watered because it would take a long time for that to seep out the bottom of the gorilla cart. That's neither here nor there. I'm so sorry. Floor is a mess because there was just soil and stuff spilling all over the places. I was pulling those tables out. Those had been here for I think three or four years. So there was a lot of stuff on them, though I clean them out every year, but you get it, dirt. Some things need to be swept up. So it's hard to tell, <laughs> but this is a vast improvement. Every year for the last several years, there has always been a row of plants that goes across this entire front here. But by having all this extra space up here and having this open shelf on top, they're up there now. So they're not in the ground. Just less things to trip over or more room to put more plants. Either way, it's a good thing. Oh yeah, I can do all kinds of rearranging here. I can pull that hibiscus, pop it over here. It was over here last year and it was loving life. It bloomed and flowered and grew all season long. And there are lots of little plants over here that I can move over there because this shelf does still have a good amount of space on it. So that's probably what I'll do. I have some vandacious orchids, the stragglers, the ones that survived 2020. They're still hanging on over here. This isn't where I'm going to keep them. That's just where they are for now. Seemed like an appropriate spot since there's light and it'd be easy to water them and have something to catch the water and it wouldn't go falling everywhere. And I have them mostly near other plants that like spray and humidity. So that it'll be okay for a week or two while I figure out some other things. And there are a couple of reasons that I only did the one system here and I didn't replace both. The first reason is that, it's hard to see, but underneath this, as a lawnmower that's folded up and there's absolutely nowhere else to put it. I, this garage, it is full. Last year, you know, I purged, had that, all that cancer mindset stuff going on. I was like, I'm just getting rid of everything that I don't want anymore. And I did that, but there still isn't room to move the lawnmower anywhere else, at least not without losing places for plants. I don't want to do that. So I suppose I could, if I were to get another one, just put the lawnmower on the bottom shelf and put the shelf up higher. That seems like a silly thing to do though. I don't want to do that. I can play with some things and figure out a different situation for next year perhaps, but for now this has to do because there's, there's nothing else I can do with that lawnmower for right now. The other reason was just a pretty simple one. I'm sure y'all will understand it's money. This is expensive. It was a pricey thing to pull off. I had to save and plan out for this for a while. I, doing it times two. Yeah, I just didn't really see that happening this year. However, this is still far, far, far cheaper than doing some of those grow light systems. I had thought about getting some of those sunlight grow racks from Gardener Supply or just anything that was similar, but I really couldn't find anything that was going to be about the right size for the right price with these being 48 by 24, and then I have the trays in there that are 48 by 24 and they're three inches deep. I know uh, that the one I was looking at from Gardner Supply was, I think the trays were 46 or basically 47 by 15 and a half, something like that and two inches deep. So they were much smaller, not drastically smaller, but small enough to make a big difference as far as how many plants could go on them. And uh, a lot of the reviews were saying that the bottom shelves on those sunlight grow racks were kind of weak. Maybe that's something they fixed. But anyways, those were, they were between $925 and like $1,200, I think. You know, prices are always fluctuating, so that could have changed. That, I mean, $1,200, even $925. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, they're prettier. Would have looked very nice. And you can adjust the lights on them, like the height and everything. I can do that here. Not as simply. It's not as pretty, but... I, I don't hate the way this looks. I'd have this in my house. I would do it much, in a much more tidy fashion and I might paint the light fixtures black to match some of the other things. But otherwise I'm good with this for like a third to a fourth the cost. 
Yeah, this is pretty good. Is that right, doing the math? Yeah, that is about a fourth the cost. When I factor in that I had to buy some more lights, if I had to buy them all brand new, then one, two, three, four, five, six times two would be 120. Hold on, I have to do math. So it would have been about half the price if I had to get all the lights brand new. This is good. This is more fitting for my needs, the sizes, more fitting, the depth, dimensions, everything. I just feel that I can do a lot more with this than I could with one of those systems. But again, not as pretty, but that's okay. I'm mostly excited about the part that I haven't even been able to finish yet because one the lights weren't working and I didn't buy enough. About having a space up here that's higher for the taller plants up top, I think that's going to be really nice. And everything that's going to be up here, pretty much what you're seeing right now, colocasias, bananas, that pseudoranthema begonia that has been very, 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 very bad need of pruning. But they're all plants where during the winter time, they don't need a whole lot if you're keeping them more on the cool side, just an occasional drink, mild lighting. I'm not going to be keeping this spot hot, I don't think. Well, we'll see. I'm still researching the heaters. I have it narrowed down. Getting pretty close to making a decision there. The likelihood is these will be more plants that are just going to be chilling out up top and don't need intense bright light because they're just going to be more in, in like a semi-dormant space phase for the winter time, maybe. And I could always just order another one of these trays and put it over here on this table. I don't think I need to do that though because most of the plants that I keep over here are not ones that need a lot of water during the winter time. The alocasias, there's a maxillaria orchid, the begonias, they tend to just sort of chill out. So they aren't plants where I really am that concerned about water going all over the place and they stack up nicely around that tray that's left there. I really do like these trays. They're nice and sturdy. They don't have much give to them. Not much flex, so they should last a very long time. And there's a lot of versatility with the depth. I could have gone with the one that these are the three inch, and then the next one was, I think, six or seven inches deep, and I just thought that that might be too much. That would be great if I were doing this in a full on hydroponic way, but I'm not. I don't. Having water moving around dirt, it's just you have to mess with pre filters and things get clogged. Could put a bit of the expanded clay pebbles in here too to have them sit on. But again, with soil, I don't like those things combining with each other. Anytime soil spills out over the side, it gets into that, the pebbles, and it just, it gets dirty. So I would just prefer to not have to mess with any of that. Keeping it like this is good. I'm not going to go full on hydro with these systems, I don't think. We will see. I might get excited about it and decide that I want to dedicate one of these shelves to doing like the rock wool plugs and just devoting an entire space for cuttings. I doubt that's going to happen, but I could, because that's what these are meant for when you have them all plumbed up and everything you can fill these with those rock wool cubes how really however you want to do your propagations and your cuttings and then you can set those up onto a recirculation system like i mentioned where you have a basin where you keep your water and you can add your nutrients to it it'll pump the water up and it runs through and then you have a standpipe down there in the drain end so you can maintain whatever height you want and then it'll pour back down and go back through a recirculating system the main reason that i'm not considering that for right now is because of temperature if you're going to have water around the roots of the plants and you want them to do well, then that water needs to be a good temperature. Generally like 77 is a good spot. I would sh probably struggle to keep the water that warm in here, maybe. I don't know for sure. I won't know until I get the space heater situation out here worked out. It depends on how mild this winter is. So far it's been very mild. Despite being pretty cold the last few days, the those cold temperatures were normal for here. It's just been above average, so it felt horribly cool. Who knows what January is going to be like though. So I'd either have to heat the water or just keep the air warm enough, which is what would be the most ideal way to do that. But if you don't have that water warm enough, then you can end up stunning the growth. You're not going to get root, good root development out of the plants. They're just going to kind of hang out. Sometimes they'll just rot and die if it's not warm enough. We're dealing with cuttings that is. So that's the other reason that I'm not doing a full on hydro system with this. These are basically just drainage and humidity trays for right now. And I'm okay with that. I'm totally fine with it. They're going to serve their purpose and I think make life much easier out here. Much, much, much easier. The way things were set up on those plastic ones over there, they worked, but it's just the, there wasn't enough gas exchange basically. So I had air in there, those air stones that I mentioned to keep the water moving and help to keep that moist air moving up around the roots of the plants, which the plants appreciated but it just wasn't evaporating fast enough so it was hard to get it to drain properly and i put little drains in but they clogged very easily i'm just over it and i'm done with those so i'm glad that there's only one of those left out here and that one i don't even that one doesn't even have an air stone run to it because this entire area right here all plants like i mentioned don't need tons and tons of water they generally just hang out most of the winter time i really do like it it's it's 
nicer to look at. Like I said, it looks better in person. It's still messy right now. I'm looking forward to organizing this and playing around with the positioning of the plants and everything. But it's also just so nice to have space for the plants. Having this open area down here, it's been years since there's been this much floor space in the grow room during the winter time. Usually it's very jam packed. Not a lot of room to walk around because of all the plants. These lights. I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend them. I've been using them for several years and the plants grow under them and they've been doing well. You can watch the old vlogs and see how the plants do under them. They aren't made for plants though. They're not within that full spectrum range, but apparently they're like in there enough to keep the plants happy and going throughout the winter time. Over here in these, oh, 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 oh okay. Almost just tripped and fell. These tubes right here, these are LED tubes actually made for plants that I put into just fluorescent fixtures. And the plants do really well under these as well. But I've never noticed a drastic difference between the ones from Sam's Clubs and then the ones that were actually made for plants. Really haven't. You can see a definite difference in the color, but growth wise, things have always been pretty much the same between the two. I might get a smidge more flowering on this side, but I don't know if I would attribute that to the light or just the fact that I keep more plants that flower over there. Begonias and therums, and therums, and the hibiscus, those are usually over there because that's pretty much the only spot that they fit. So I don't, I don't know what to attribute that to. Because just from looking at it, you would think that you would actually have better flowering over here because the light's more into that warm side where there would be more of that red, which is what encourages flowering. But without a spectrometer and par meters and those things, that's all just me looking at it and making guesses. <laughs> just disregard everything I just said. It's not scientific, it's useless. I can only offer the anecdotal part from my experience, which has been the plants have done okay under these $20 shop lights. There's some thirsty babies down there. I'm really looking forward to getting out here and watering tomorrow. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, shorter vlog, sorry about that. Just, you know, y'all are doing it too. Holidays and those things are going on. Family coming in town, trying to get things ready. I'm not doing my holiday stuff until late Jan, not late January. The end of the month, the 30th and the 31st, I believe. So if there's not a vlog next weekend, then that's why. So it'd probably be the weekend after that. That's just, don't worry about it. We'll figure something out. There'll be something posted probably. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. I had a good time. Glad to have this done. This has been one of those projects where I've been planning it out in my head for a long time and to actually see it start to come together. Oh, it's such a nice feeling. Oh, and this is, this is pretty much what this is supposed to look like this time of year. It's that Pharaoh's mask. They just, they look pathetic during the winter time. It's okay. A lot of that is it's summer growth that's going to start to die back and then you can see in the middle, sort of, that little stringy bit coming up that has some new stuff coming up that will probably be more stout and fitting to the actual plant in the shelf inside these long stringy bits. Happy holidays. Hope y'all are enjoying it. I don't know when I'm releasing this video. It'll be out the day before, the day after Christmas and happy just everyday life to those of you who aren't celebrating. So hope that everything's just going well for you. Hope that everything's going well for everybody. Comment down below. Say hi, that bud. No, you're not gonna focus, not gonna happen. Love talking to everybody. Hope you're having a good time. Everything's just going beautifully for you with whatever's going on. Got some flowers here on the Disso cactus. The problem is they only bloom when I'm not around. They have a really pretty yellow flower on them and they smell amazing. Kind of like a spicy vanilla smell. It's one of my favorite things about the winter time is this cactus just blooms and blooms and blooms and it smells fantastic out here. Oh, when I was at Home Depot, I didn't get any succulents. I started to and I was even like, I was kneeled down on the ground for a while, <laughs> sorting through them and I was like, you know, forget this. I'm not hanging out on the ground at Home Depot to pick out plants because they want to keep them where nobody can get to them. I don't think so. Not when I have all kinds of succulents at home that I can prune up and stick in that snowman's mouth should I decide to do that planter. If I do, y'all will see it. All right, again, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Oh, yes, yeah, see, I need to move that. That doesn't fit there. <laughs> and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.